welcome, Kenderwood family. And for those of you watching online, welcome to another sermonic moment. Now, this one will be a little different than it is usually. I will have with me um, our first elder, Elder Preston Handy, uh, blessing us as we discuss a very important passage. Now, while I spoke last week, uh, I emphasized the need for us to go through the process of sanctification, recognizing that we need Christ. But we quoted a passage in Philippians chapter 2 that focused on the mind of Christ. And I wanted to tackle that passage today. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. How can we further have the mind of God? How can we essentially do what Jesus did in order to win souls to him? And so that's the subject matter for today. And I want to encourage you to, to position yourselves to not only uh, just hear what we have to say, but, but open up the word of God with us, journey with us. And if you want to even, um, if you can, send it to um, uh, on our website or even on the YouTube chat right now. Just type in some questions that you may have or some um, insights that you may want to bring to the discussion. And, and we'll try our best, maybe not this Sabbath, but the following Sabbath to go over them because we're all journeying and studying the Word of God together. So once again, may God richly bless you. And now we're going to go right into our discussion as we seek to open God's Word. Welcome and happy Sabbath, everyone. It is uh, good to be in God's house. I know you're at home, mm -hmm. but the Bible says where there are two or three are gathered, God is there in the midst to bless. Amen. Now, last Sabbath, I had the chance to um, speak to, um, I guess, the process of sanctification and how to lean on God, especially yeah. during those times, to get your second win, which is hope in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. out of that message, we, um, we looked at a passage in Philippians chapter 2 that um, uh, we talked about, and yes. it's what we want to actually have our discussion this Sabbath on today, which is... The mind of Christ. Exactly. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, two. verses uh, 5 through to 11. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, it's just funny. God's mind is, is not like our mind. I mean, the Bible says in um, Isaiah chapter 55, which is the book that we're studying for our lesson, um, verses 8 and 9, that his ways are not my ways and his yeah. thoughts are not my thoughts. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and the description is, as the heavens are higher than the earth, yep. so are his thoughts Thoughts's above ours and ways better than ours. Amen. So, mm -hmm. so, Elder, what's, what's so unique and what's so different about the mind of God versus our mind? Uh, it seems because of the, you know, the sin problem that we have, mm -hmm. our minds are influenced to go a certain way, certain ways, uh, in a direction that the one who has never sinned will not think. Because our mind really determines where we go, what we decision we make, and so on. So being a... a, a person who have sinned in the past, and, you know, then we have a tendency to think certain ways, because mm -hmm. you remember certain things, they might stray in a certain direction. Yeah. So we, you know, we end up having to have that mind directed mm. by the Spirit of God. Amen, amen. So here we have a, a, a flawed mind. Mm -hmm. I'm talking mm -hmm. about myself. Yeah, we all, we all, yes. <laughs> and we have the perfect mind of God. Mm -hmm. Now, let's actually bring that to the passage that we're going to focus on today, okay. uh, which is uh, in Philippians chapter 2. Yeah. Now, the passage talks off with, um, with Paul addressing the Philippian community, um, pleading. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like from verses like 1 all the way to 4, he was mm -hmm. pleading mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, to make his joy complete, that we be of one mind. Yes, what, yes. What, what's with this emphasis in in, in, in him desiring for the, community, uh, for the Philippian community to be unified? Uh, as I see it, it's because uh, simply they were, he was in a situation where uh, imprisoned mm. at that point in time, and uh, uh, there, were, there was some preaching that his, his guilt and sort of caused him to be where he's at, while the others preaching, well, look, uh, let's pray that he will come out of where he's at, okay. out of prison. And so they were going in two different directions, mm. and they were kind of fighting each other. And so Christ, uh, Paul recognized, hey, uh, we need to, you need to come together and have that Christ-like mind where you have that godly focus, all right? Uh, and, and not um, have that tug of war, as you will say, uh, even in presenting the gospel. You must have one focus upon God and his righteousness mm -hmm. and, and keep it that way. 
It's somewhere there in verse 4, I think it is in the, chapter, the same chapter, where they had that tug of war going on. Yeah. Well, it's saying here that in verse 4, let each of you look not only for his own interests, okay. but also for the interests of others. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So it's as if the church was kind of looking out for themselves. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Looking out for um, what they believe was to be right and to be accepted and to be practiced. Yes. Uh -huh. and, and Paul is here emphasizing, no, 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 no. Be, in one, be of one mind. Exactly. Yeah. Be of one heart. He actually uses the word, I think, in verse 3, love. Mm -hmm. It says here in um, verse 3, let nothing be done, or rather, verse 2, um, fulfill my joy, mm -hmm. being like-minded, having the same love, being one accord and of one mind. You know, and one thing I examine when I read the, the Hebrew scripture is that um, uh, they interchange the word mind and heart. Mm. Uh, sometimes they say heart, the other times they say mind. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems that they uh, express themselves there. And so when you say well, be the same heart, it, it means you must be thinking with the same, from the same perspective, uh, you know, godly, righteous, mm -hmm. uh, not fighting each other, but have that love. When you say love, you think of heart. When you think of, uh, think of uh, thinking, you think of, of mind. Yeah. So yeah. they use them you know, interchangeably to me. They, they do, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. And, and, and as you know, in Jewish literature, they always tend to repeat the same thing in two different ways, yes, a lot. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that, that's Definitely. what's happening in this situation. Yeah. Now, let's actually move to the actual, um, the meat of the matter. Uh, in verse 5, um, the plea is, let this mind be yes. in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Exactly, yeah. Now, prior to that, he's talking about, you know, be unified. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. be unified mm -hmm. in your love and yes. be in one accord. Yes. So, yes. so the question I have for you, Elder, is what does unity have to do with humility? Mm. Wonderful question. What, good question there. I thought of that, you know. I'm thinking that now to um, humility, humbling oneself mm. and the mind. Now, I recognize that if one is not humble, if let the two of us are sitting here, we're talking, and I've got my own way, that's what they had there. Mm -hmm. And I want to have things my way. Yeah. And let's suppose you want to keep, have you a certain way. If we don't humble ourselves, we would not unite. Because mm. I would say, look, I want it this way. You say, you want it that way. And so we would not be able to come together mm. until somebody humbles themselves, uh, his or herself, and realizes, well, look, okay, let me see what you have in mind. Could I go with that at least for a little bit, a little bit on the journey and yeah. then see if we can come back together? Mm -hmm. So when one humbles himself, then they can cooperate with the other. Then we can have more of a, a oneness, a unity, mm. uniting with each other's uh, thought and dire direction. Amen, amen. And the thing is, it's, it's, it's funny because Paul here is addressing the people that are obviously divided. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know what, please come together. And then he gives an example of the mind of Christ. And yes. he goes on. And to be honest with you, it's the most humble act in all of human history. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, which oh, yes. meant that he essentially in all intents and purposes, was fully God. Yes, of course. Right? Mm -hmm. But made himself of no reputation and humbled himself. That, mm -hmm. that condescension yeah. is something that, that no Philippian is being asked to do. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that, that extreme from, from Godship to being abused by man yes. is not a distance to that we're going to have to travel in terms of our, our, our humility. Mm -hmm. So Paul is here saying, hold on a second. If Christ did all that, yes, Y'all can't get together uh -huh. and be unified? Yeah, <laughs> you know. He gave up all that, that, you know, being God and come become man and even a humbler man and you, uh, we are here, mm -hmm. you know. He, he, he fed people when most times people tend to keep things to themselves. He, he you know, he did so many things. He healed the sick and went beyond his means. You know, come down and wear those dirty sandals and walk in the streets. And mm. who would bring themselves down from there uh, after being in such a high position? People today, like a prime minister or somebody, or one of us who think we have some high position, would find it difficult to humble ourselves to that degree. Mm. Where we come down to the lowly, the leper, the, the, the dumb, and all these people who Christ walk and talk with and heal. Hey, that's really condescension. Mm. I mean, let, let, let's, let's be real. Let's be real. Um, you know, I, I try to, I consider myself, uh, I'm trying to be humble. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, like, say, for example, I would, I'm accustomed to driving. I'm accustomed to my vehicle, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But if something were to happen and I have to take the bus, 
Okay. In my little brain, it seems like it's, it's, it's a challenge now or, or to stand out there in the cold. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and wait, because you're so accustomed to a certain kind of life, a certain yep. way of, uh, of transporting mm -hmm. or, or transportation, that when something changes, yeah. right, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's tough because, you know, many of us are so accustomed to the creature comforts of life, yeah. and it would be a sacrifice to push, those, to push those things aside or to inconvenience ourselves so, yeah, okay. for someone who is desperately in need. Mm -hmm. Not only that, to put aside our pride. Uh, for example, you, you, you get the accident, I had experience like that, accident with my car, and I want one like it or better. All right. You know? <laughs> I'm not thinking that that's just pride right there. Mm -hmm. uh, much more to just got to go hopping on the bus and you know, sit among a whole crowd of people and be, you know, uh, yes, we tend to want to keep that standard, not want to be humble enough to call it lower than we are. Mm. Now, 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 we're not suggesting or saying that, that when you have means and when God blesses you with means, yeah, okay. that you're not being humble by, by, by using them. No. The problem comes with having those means, if they were to be taken from you, mm -hmm. or God asked you to pivot from them, to not be willing because you're too comfortable. Yes, There's yes. a difference. I, I was um, listening to a, 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 a person share something. It was a great, great, uh, great doctor. Mm -hmm. And he mentioned, this was in Jamaica when I was, when I was studying there. Mm -hmm. He mentioned that if God were to allow me to lose everything, and he had millions of dollars, okay. everything, I know that um, because of what he's given me in my mind and in my heart, if he wills, I can get it all back. Yes, and so I'm not attached mm -hmm. to my stuff. I'm not attached to my things. Okay. Okay. My, my desire in life is to simply just follow God because sometimes I'll be well off. Yeah. Sometimes I may not be. Of course. But I'll still be in God's hands. And you know do that he provide them all for you. So like that, you know, mm -hmm. you need to recognize that fact. Um, yeah. And so we have to be careful to, it depends then on, on the mindset. We come back to that word mind all the time. Yep. The mindset. We have to have that mindset to say, well, look, uh, God has provided me with this, and he gives and he takes. Mm -hmm. And if he takes it at this time, I'll trust him to bring it back to me again, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So the mind is a big, big governing factor here. That's what we have to say. The governing factor is the mind. The mind makes us act certain ways mm -hmm. and do certain things. It starts there. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we say talk of having the mind of Christ, if we have Christ's mind, we will act like He acts because from what the mind produces, our actions uh, become uh, become evident. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, like a, a person who drinks or who's an addict, mm -hmm. when he thinks of what mm -hmm. he's addicted to, he loses the control of himself. Mm. See, so here we come back to the mind of Christ. When we allow Christ to direct our minds, the word of God, to, to govern our thoughts, uh, we will be acting according to the thoughts that are governed. Mm. So that's what we need to uh, have in us today. And that's what Christ had. He had the ability to, to, to so allow his mind to love his creature, his creation, mm -hmm. that he humbled himself enough to come down, to give up what he had, in fact, and go through all the struggles that he went through, difficulties, the trials, temptations, and, you know, the like, uh, just to save us. Amen, amen. Just to save us. And, and going back to something you just said, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's the, um, the unifying factor to bring um, uh, unity and humility together. Yeah. And that's love. Mm -hmm. Yes. It course. was love that motivated Jesus Christ exactly. to sacrifice the way he sacrificed. Yes. And Paul here is saying, like Christ, have in his mind, mm -hmm. because you love like Christ loved, yeah then you should be unified like Christ wants you to be. And if it involves sacrifice, if it involves that condescension. Yeah. And notice the imagery here mm -hmm. when he talks about the actual sacrifice of Christ. He talks about him leaving the courts of heaven yes. and being found in a form of a man, man. And, and was made in the likeness of man, mm -hmm. right? Eventually killed by mankind. Yes. But it says afterwards, wherefore God hath highly exalted him. him. Yes. As a result of that condescension, yes. <laughs> he then became exalted and he was given a name which is above every name. Yes. So what it implies is that that act of love, that act of humility yeah. resulted in a condescension that put him in a place 
that he may not have been before. And I, I, and I, and I want to explore that, that, that point there a little bit there. <laughs> because how can God be exalted? No, that's what I was thinking. I just wanted to hear you explain that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how, but, but, God's already at the top. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but the, the scripture says, he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Yes, and yes. Christ humbled himself to that degree. Mm-hmm. Exalt, exaltation means bringing him back up to perhaps just where he was. But the thing is, it actually goes on to define what that exaltation will look like. Mm-hmm. Because it says, when he's been given that name, at that name, yes. every knee shall knee bow. Shall bow. Mm-hmm. Now that every knee portion is, 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 is significant because not every knee bowed to Christ in heaven. Mm-hmm. There was war in heaven. Yes, right. Right? Uh-huh. And so the devil and his minions fought against God and his angels and was cast out of heaven. Mm-hmm. But there will come a time at the end of all things. Yes. That yes. even the devil yes. will have to declare just and true are thy ways, yes. O king of saints. Mm-hmm. Definitely. When I hear that too, I thought of the idea of uh, right now, every knee is not, being bow- is not bowing. Only those who respect and reverence and serve God. Mm-hmm. But the time comes when those who are bowing over continue to bow, mm. but those who refuse, like the angels and Sibus and those who refuse to accept Christ, all those will bow in reverence because they've seen where they are mm-hmm. and where, how faulty they've been. So, yes, every will bow mm-hmm. sometime in the future, in fact, when Christ comes. And, yeah. and so I think w- what this passage speaks to is that if Christ never took that posture of humility Mm -hmm. to come down Um, and be sacrificed by humankind, then the ultimate result of the devil, his angels, Mm -hmm. all the wicked recognizing that they are wrong may have have never happened because Mm -hmm. they would have been destroyed because the the separation from God is is destruction. Complete destruction, yeah. But this Mm -hmm. process that Christ went to, Mm -hmm. the Bible says that as a result, he will be given this name that every knee will have to acknowledge Mm -hmm. the fact that he is Jesus Christ, the righteous. Yes, because the very fact that he humbled himself and went through so much when we were so wrong, Mm. uh, it it demands of us, of the individual, that this is beyond what I thought it was. Yes. You know, I I just can't handle this anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. that's it. Give up. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because now, because it, this, this passage shows the power of humility, right? Yes, yes. Now, I'm sure there are some people asking, and they'll be wondering, you know, um, does that mean I'm a doormat? Does it mean that okay. people should take advantage of me? Go with that. Go with that. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's a wonderful book that the, um, that the woman here at Kendall would have been examining called Boundaries. Oh, yes. And oh, yeah. um, the bottom line is, that um, you can't say yes to everything, no. right? No. <laughs> you, you, you can't. It's, it's, it's physically impossible. So, so how does humility uh, relate to, to setting healthy boundaries and, and, and growing in Christ? Hmm. Well, one would humble himself to the, to the extent where he's going according to God's will, mm. God's desire, God's... Uh, Desire for our lives, okay? Mm-hmm. You may go down to, to raise one up, another person up. Mm. Uh, just for a period of time. That's what Christ actually did. Mm-hmm. He came down to the lowest level to bring us up to where he is, he's at. Yes. That's where he's coming again. So you take us where he's, he's going to prepare a place for us, he takes mm-hmm. us to where he is. But uh, not because one goes down, humble, uh, become humble, you're going to stay humble to, uh, and remain there. You humble yourself in order to reach someone reach some situation, uh, save the situation, and then bring things back up to where you want him to be. Mm. And that's what Christ did. That's why he humbled himself to that extent, that he mm. will save us back to us. Mm. He will save us. He will bring us up to that level where he's at, where he wants us to be, so we can dwell with him yes. in eternity. And oddly enough, um, when you assume a posture of humility, mm-hmm. because it's being fueled by love, yes, yes. you don't want to put the individual that... Um, that you're sacrificing for mm-hmm. in a position where they think it's okay to take advantage of people. Right. That's not healthy. No. Not at right? All. Not at all. You're actually, it's, it's called, you're, you're enabling them. Yes. You don't want to be To an, take advantage. Uh-huh. And so in, 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 in being humble, there's a certain level of wisdom mm-hmm. that, that comes with it, right? Yes, God is, yes. is going to be asking you to do certain things for him. Yeah. But at the same time, he may not give you all the specifics, mm-hmm. but he expects you to use your wisdom that he's blessed you with to not enable 
individuals yes. to basically have an unhealthy relationship with you, right? So mm. sometimes, even though you're humble, Jesus Christ still had to <laughs> uh, be kicking folk out of the temple, right? right? Yes, of course, yes. <laughs> even yes. though he was humble, there's, he had to rebuke. There's an extent to which you can go on, uh, right? no further, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So so even like, uh, I think it's um, when he called the, the Pharisees, Pharisees whitewashed sepulchers yes, yes. filled with dead, dead man's, man's bones, bones. <laughs> you see? Right, that, so, so he had to, even though he, yeah, <laughs> even though he assumed a posture of humility, yeah, yeah. that humility... Um, uh, did not enable individuals to have an unhealthy relationship with him by that's thinking right. that they can take advantage of Christ anytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, and, and that's why he whipped them out of the temple, like you were hinting early on. Mm -hmm. You only go to that extent. You, I can't have you desecrate a temple like this. This is, God, this is the Father's house. Yeah. And he only allowed him to go to a certain extent, and then he had to pull the whip out. Mm -hmm. See? So, 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 so humility is not equal to or the same as passivity. No. Uh, there are boundaries if we're not, you're not just passive. Mm. You go to an extent, and from that extent, uh, there is a, a stopping point. Mm. You got to go from there and try to bring that situation up from where it is to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, that's why God will say, well, it, is, it is done. Mm -hmm. Because he, he, go, he allows things to go to a certain extent, and then there's no more. When the fullness of time has come, Christ came. Yes. When the fullness of time comes, Jesus will come again. Mm -hmm. So he allows things to go to a certain time, to a certain level, and to a certain pitch, and he will say, well, no, that's enough. Mm -hmm. When this gospel is preached to all the world, the end shall come. Amen. So God allows it to go to a certain extent, and then he says, okay, that's enough. Amen, amen. So, even though, so when Christ humbled himself, he allowed it to go to an extent, and then he tries to bring the, 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 the rabbis and the temple up. And when mm -hmm. they didn't come, he called them dry bones and sepulchre. Mm hmm See? It, it, it's, it's so powerful because um, Christ is wanting so much for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like a, a car that's been designed by the engineer and fine-tuned and built perfectly for this purpose. Okay. When we start modifying it and doing all kind of something with a vehicle, <laughs> it doesn't perform or its, it's, its lifespan is shortened. Right. So, so Christ designed us specifically yeah. to have his mind, to mm -hmm. reflect his love. Yes, definitely. The thing is, though, we are, we are shaped so profoundly by our experiences. Yes. Definitely. And I'm, I'm speaking now to the, to the individual who um, may have been abused as a child. Okay. Uh, persons that may have been taken advantage of by other people. And so their natural disposition is, mm -hmm. is one of fear yeah. and one of skepticism mm -hmm. and one of hurt. And so it's difficult for them to, to trust and to, and to open yeah. themselves up and to and to humble themselves yes. because they've been taken advantage of yeah. in the past. Mm -hmm. now, 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 what would you say to some, someone like that, that we may interact with? Uh, how would you provide them, I guess, with hope um, about the fact that when Jesus Christ is asking you to assume a posture of humility, yeah. that, you know, essentially uh, it is a good thing to do and not something that you should be afraid of? Mm -hmm. Um, uh, about the person who is damaged to the extent and need help, we have to help them to see uh, back we get to the mind again. Mm. How uh, that person is thinking from time to time. If you can help them to start thinking differently, they will start acting differently towards situations, towards others around them. Mm -hmm. The main problem is uh, we can't, cannot get away from this mindset. As long as we have a mindset a certain way going to affect us in every way thereafter. Mm. Uh, we cannot think a certain way and act a different way. We, you get caught along the way. Yeah. You make mistakes and you, you're sure that that's not, you're pretensive, you're hypocritical. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And so when we come to individuals that have that kind of problem, we've got to see how we can help them tune them out of the mindset they have. The, the mind of Christ, we can try to place them. In fact, I did some study in counseling and realized that um, Christian counseling is the best you could find out there. Mm -hmm. Because you can add not only uh, um, techniques, but you can add Christ in the picture. Mm -hmm. You can bring the Holy Spirit into the picture. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, you have a, a twofold presentation, twofold, uh, you know, yeah, let's say, attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's what has to happen. You will find that a person who is being counseled to, um, at, um, because they have some kind of a phobia, mm -hmm. you can show them a well, look, Christ is there to guard and protect and keep you. Yeah. And so you can trust him for that. Also, you can apply this kind of a skill where you act this way and that way. So you have the actions that are passed on mm -hmm. and the faith in Christ, which helps us to think differently. Yeah. So 
think differently and act differently. And that would bring a, bring a, a huge balance to help the individual to overcome whatever the, the phobia or the, the problem is. And, and so what, what I, I really liked what you said um, in that when someone is struggling, right, and, mm -hmm. and we're all broken yeah, yeah. <laughs> to a certain extent. Struggling somewhere. Right? Um, when yeah. someone is, is struggling, um, that they can get help. And, yes. and, and, and the help can come in a multitude of ways, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. whether it be help um, emotionally to kind of work through some yes. of those challenges. Yes. And it's never easy. Um, oddly enough, I had an encounter where um, I was, I just started pastoral ministry. And there was this young girl, couldn't be more than maybe 18, 19 years old, mm. um, that um, I had a conversation with. And she started going over all the things that happened to mm. her. Mm -hmm. And it made her so tense to even be near the Bible what? because of what the Bible, what, what she associated, her, she associated her pain with the Bible. Right. Okay, okay. And so she had to go through a long, arduous process mm. Of, of, of unpacking those, yes, yes. Those, those challenges and those mental hurdles and yeah. those emotional barriers mm -hmm. uh, that she had to work through. But, but through it all, mm -hmm. God was in that process. Amen. And Amen. so it may not necessarily be like a quick fix. Like, you no. know what, why are you, why, why you, why you behaving that way? Why, yeah. why do you have this position? Or why, do you have, why are you so afraid? Or, or, or why aren't you opening up mm -hmm. more? Why aren't you more humble? That's, like, instead yeah. of accusing someone, mm -hmm. understand and empathize, where they're coming That's from right. yeah. and work with them. That's yeah. what Christ is doing. Yes. He's humbling himself mm -hmm. so can... and he's working with the individual to get them to a place with, with professional help, as, yes. as, yes. as you yes. rightly mentioned, mm -hmm. um, to get to that place where they can accept Christ. Mm -hmm. He's taking us on that journey. Mm -hmm. where, uh, it's a lifetime journey. Sanctification mm -hmm. is the work of a lifetime. Yes. So he takes us on a journey and day by day as we step and walk with him, he brings us over that hump. And, and up to that place where you want us to be. Amen. So it's not an overnight thing. None of this no. is overnight. Mm -hmm. See? So that's why we have to trust God daily and allow him to lead us moment by moment. And uh, let him humble us uh, in all we say and do. It's, uh, you know, we might find out, hey, I'm not humble this way or in that way. Uh, pray about it then. Mm -hmm. If you find we don't have the, whole, the, the fruit of the Spirit, uh, which needs, we need to have to give us that gentleness and to get along with others and so on, pray about it. Mm -hmm. Ask and it shall be given. Yes. That's part of it. Amen. That's Amen. part of it. And then he'll bring, you, bring us out of that grass. And he'll look back and say, wow, <laughs> that's not anymore. I don't do that anymore. I don't think that way anymore. Amen. I don't speak like that anymore. See? Mm. Because Christ journeyed with us, brought, brought us over the hump along the way, and changed our minds Amen. and our thinking and then our actions. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So I guess the last point that I wanted to bring up was with us. Right, this, okay. this process you're saying that we're going through called sanctification, yeah. and um, how humility works with it. Now, how can we be true to ourselves, okay, and at the same time take on a characteristic in humility that seems to be unnatural? Mm. <laughs> We're naturally full of ourselves. Yes. We are taught by the media. We're taught yes. by, you know, everything. everywhere we go, it's yes. just look out for number one, try mm -hmm. to take care of yourself, right? Yes. And it's everything. not saying that we're not, we're not diminishing or putting down self-care. Okay. But in the context of humility, but humility seems very unnatural. How, how, do we, how do we become humble and not be fake at the same time? Hmm. Food for thought. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, how we become humble. First of all, we need to um, recognize we need, somehow we must recognize we need some help to bring us out, out of where we are. Mm. Uh, you tell a guy, listen, <laughs> I went to Guyana, I'm from Guyana, mm -hmm. and this gentleman, this cousin of mine, he drank so furiously, so, uh, so like a fish, as I don't want to say, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he would be drunk all day, all yeah. week couldn't work after a while. So I went and met him, and I was studying some psychology at that time, and I said, okay, let me see if I can help you out of this. Yeah. I said, where's the bottle you're drinking from? You got a half bottle of some kind of a rum. I said, put it on the floor, just by the door. He says, I want to see you kick this bottle out of, this, out of the door, into the yard. I said, I hate you. I'm trying to give him a different mindset. Mm -hmm. So he tries to realize, hey, uh, really? I don't have to stick with that thing. He could not do it. Mm -hmm. 
he started crying. Mm -hmm. Then to throw, throw with a half bottle of whiskey, or whatever he had in his head. Mm -hmm. You know what? He died from cirrhosis of the liver, mm -hmm. much drinking. Mm -hmm. So one has got to be brought to the point where he or she needs to uh, see it a little differently from the way they were seeing. Mm -hmm. Encourage them to look in a different direction, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Pray that God give us the, give you the power to look away a little, at least a little at a time yeah. from where you've been focusing. So the mind will begin to be, begin to be changed gradually. You can't change a person overnight. Mm -hmm. In fact, humans don't like to change. Yeah, we resist changes. No, we so it do. is it's difficult to to change one, bring them out to where they are, into where you want them to be. And that's why the journey with Christ is so necessary. Little mm -hmm. by little, spirit work upon our minds, work upon our hearts, mm -hmm. say heart and mind, and eventually influence our thoughts mm -hmm. and give us the power to overcome. Well, that's powerful. That's powerful because. Um, when you mentioned that we are sinners yeah, and course. we're in need of help, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's, I feel, the first step. That's how we make those two work together. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. being fake and being humble. Yeah. It, you have to recognize that, that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And we yes, have yes. to come to that conclusion as well that there is a problem with us. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be some kind of self-inventory that's mm -hmm. taken. Exactly. And you're asking God to help expose the flaws in your character. Yes, yes. I mean, uh -huh. we have to go through this process in order to grow. Yes. We can't just kind of live in a silo and say, you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> and, and ignore the fact that there's still something, there's still things that uh, Christ is working on yes. in you. Mm -hmm. So going through that process of what I call exposure, yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, exposing the man of sin mm -hmm. uh, allows you to say, you know what? These are some problems that, that, that I'm, I'm in need of help to mm -hmm. overcome. Mm -hmm. And that's where we, we listen to messages, sermons. That's where we read the scriptures. So our minds could be open to something different. I am like this, and that's not good for mm. me. Right? And when I see I'm like this, and I'm not, that's not good for me, I say, oh, maybe I need to have some change done in my life. Mm. Right? And when the person starts thinking like that, then, and they hear more messages, and they read more, and then they realize, yes, Lord, help me. <laughs> Pastor, pray for me. Mm -hmm. Come, pray with me. Help me. I want to overcome this. Uh, so we need to have some consistent thing jarring the mind, showing us where we are. Yeah. And unless we show us, we are, see, we are seeing where we are at, we won't get out of where we're sitting. Yeah. We sit there. Like, like this, the man who smokes, or whatever he does, whatever advice he has, if he does not see that he's doing something that destroys his system and see a need to change, he will not change. Mm. I've seen people who have like I said, the guy who drank so much until he died. Smoke a cigarette and he's, he's coughing all the time and keeps going. He doesn't see that he needs to get out. Talking, he says, ah, it's okay. I, my dad did it for 50, 60 years and nothing. Yeah. You see? So one needs to see that he needs to come out from where he's at. Look in a different direction. There is something better for you. Amen. And you can see there's something better for you and someone can take you on that journey. And you're willing to go and better yourself. That's mm -hmm. when we start changing. Okay, okay. So I guess the, um, one of the main words for, from the study yeah. is the fact that um, we're going to be praying and asking God to open our eyes. That's right. That's open it. our yeah. eyes to, to see ourselves mm -hmm. where we are right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where he wants us to be. Exactly. That's what each and every one must do. Whether you've been in church for 40 years or, or all your life, some people say, well, I was born in the church. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Have you accepted Christ into your heart, your life? So we've got to recognize the need for Christ. Mm. A converting experience. Convert to change from what we are, which is not according to God's will, to what we should be mm. in God's will. Amen, amen. Well, thank you very much, Elder Handy, thank for you, um, basically sharing with us yeah. and, and journeying through the Word together, oh, especially yes. this very powerful passage that I feel relates to all of us. You know, something I, I would always say is that... Um, People, we, we're naturally prideful, mm -hmm. but, but no one likes when somebody else is prideful, right? <laughs> yes, <that's> right. <laughs> we can be prideful ourselves, but yes. when somebody else is a little arrogant, ah, I don't like yes, them that yes, much. Yes, yes, so it's, it's a quality. And the mm -hmm. funny thing is um, uh, the Bible, you know, stresses the importance of, of, of having this mentality, mm -hmm. having this desire to sacrifice. Yes. And the only way that that can happen with us as believers is by, is by accepting Christ and mm -hmm. is by allowing him mm -hmm. to go through the process of exposing yes. our weaknesses and our biases and our insufficiencies mm -hmm. and also, you know, basically pruning what needs to be pruned in order for his 
will to be developed in us. And, and if we look to see what he went through for us and how far he went, it will give us that humility we need, help us along the way, mm -hmm. that humility uh, that we may also receive that change we need Amen. to become more like him. And as we see how we condescended here, we realize, oh, if he did that for me, why can't I give up this little bad habit I got? Mm. Why shouldn't I? Mm. He done that to me and he's, he's promised he'd give me all this, he'd give me eternal life, he's, he'd give me success and happiness. Even now, in fact, somebody asked me one day, if God didn't promise heaven, would you be still be a Christian? Mm -hmm. See, I said, sure. There are benefits now being a Christian right here. Yeah. So if we start accepting Christ's will now and humbling ourselves and living that life of humility, uh, we will find this, even right now, there's, there's, there are blessings. Amen. Much more a place with God. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much once again, Elder. Um, if you wouldn't mind, just, um, as we close, we just want to thank you so much for, for joining us and for yeah. um, journeying with us yeah, through man. the Word. Yes. There were many topics that were, that were delved or, or, or touched on. I shouldn't mm -hmm. say delved into, but touched <laughs> on during this, um, during this discussion. Yes. Amen. And there's so much more to go. So mm -hmm. uh, please, um, next week, We'll be actually looking at a very important topic. Mm -hmm. uh, so please stay tuned and uh, may God richly bless you. Now, Amen. Elder, would you mind just closing with us in prayer? Yes, why not? Yeah. Eternal God, we are so grateful that we, we can come before you again. As we delve into your word, O oh God, we realize that it is so sweet to know you, to have you as our saving Lord, to understand your will for our lives, and to see the opportunities we have to be like you. Father, as we look, we see, we've seen that you condescended and humble yourself to the extent that you die on the cross for our sins. How far could you have gone? And so, Lord, we thank you today. And we ask that you may be with each one of us, with everyone under the sound of my voice, that these individuals will also recognize that they need to be humble to the extent where Christ could be able to pick them up and wash them off and cleanse them and take them on a journey to sal of salvation and prepare us them for the kingdom. So thank you, Lord, for what you've done with us this evening, for the blessings we've received, and for the words we've shared. And may we continue to do your will. And Father, forgive us, and cleanse us, and prepare us for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Amen.